Samuthiri of Cori Code anglicized as Zamorin of Calicut, Portuguese, Samorim, Dutch, Samorain, Chinese, Shamitishi is the hereditary title of the Hindu monarch of the Kingdom of Cori Code on Malabar Coast, India. The Samuthiris were based at the city of Cori Code, one of the important trading ports on the southwestern coast of India. At the peak of their reign, the Samuthiris ruled over a region from Kolam to Panthalayanini Kolam .It was after the dissolution of the Kingdom of Cheras of Kranganur in the early 12th century, the Samuthiris, originally autonomous chiefs of Aranadu, demonstrated their political independence. The Samuthiris maintained elaborate trade relations with the Muslim Middle Eastern sailors in the Indian Ocean, the primary spice traders on the Malabar coast in the Middle Ages. Kori Code was then an important entrepot in southwestern India where Chinese and West Asian trade met. The Portuguese navigator Vasco da Gama visited the Kori Code in 1498, opening the sailing route directly from Europe to Asia. The Portuguese efforts to lay the foundations to Estado da India, and to take complete control over the commerce was repeatedly hampered by the forces of Samuthiri of Kori Code. The Kunjali Marikars, the famous Muslim warriors, were the naval chiefs of Kori Code. By the end of the 16th century the Portuguese, now commanding the spice traffic on the Malabar coast, had succeeded in replacing the Muslim merchants in the Arabian Sea. The Dutch supplanted the Portuguese in the 17th century, only to be followed by the English. In 1766, Haider Ali of Mysore defeated the Samuthiri of Kori Code, an English East India Company dependent at the time, and absorbed Kori Code to his state. After the Third Mysore War, Malabar was placed under the control of the company. Later, the status of the Samuthiri as independent rulers was changed to that of pensioners of the company. 1806. Etymology The title, Samuthiri, regularly appears in sources only after the c. 15th century, first time in the writings Ibn Battuta visited Kori Code in the 14th century It is safe to assume that the Aratus of Nedirapu assumed the title of Samuthiri in a later period. The Samuthiris used the title Punthorakan. In inscriptions c. early 12th century, palace records known as the Granthavaris, and in official treaties with the English and the Dutch. No records indicate the actual personal name of the ruler. Punthora may be the place of their origin, or a battlefield, or a port of great fame. The title, Kunalakan, and its Sanskrit form, Shailabdashvara, are mostly found in later literary works such as Manapravalam and Sanskrit poems. Seats of power Thrikavil Kovilakam in Panani served as a second home for the Samuthiris of Kori Code. Other secondary seats of the Samuthiri of Kori Code, all established at much later time, were Trichor and Kranganur The chief Kerala ports under control of the Samuthiris in the late 15th century were Panthalayanini Kolam, and Kori Code. The Samuthiri of Kori Code derived greater part of his revenues by taxing the spice trade through his ports. Smaller ports in the kingdom were Puthupatanam Kadakal, Parapanangadi, Tanur Tanur, Panani Panani, Chetuva Chetwai, and Kodungalar Kranganur. The port of Baipur served as a ship building center. Topic: <laughs> Kori Code the port at Kori Code held the superior economic and political position in Kerala, while Kolam Keelan, Kochi and Kanur were commercially confined to secondary roles. Travellers have called the city by different names, variations of the Malayalam name. The travellers from Middle East called it Kalakuth. Tamils called the city Kalakote. For the Chinese it was Kalifo or Kali. In the Middle Ages, Kori Code was dubbed the City of Spices, for its role as the major trading point of Asian spices. The Chinese and Middle Eastern interests in Malabar, the political ambition of the newly emergent rulers, i.e., the Samuthiris, and the decline of Port Kodungalar c. 1341 AD, etc. boosted the prosperity of the port. The rise of the Kori Code, both the port and the state, seems to have taken place only after the 13th century AD. 
Cory Code, despite being located at a geographically inconvenient spot, owed much of its prosperity to the economic policies of the Samuthiris of Cory Code. Trade at Port Cory Code was managed by the Muslim port commissioner known as the Shah Bundar Koya. The port commissioner supervised the customs on the behalf of the king, fixed the prices of the commodities and collected the share to the Cory Code treasury. The name of the famous fine variety of cotton cloth called calico is also thought to have derived from Cory Code. Panthalayanini Kolam Also known as Fandarina, Ibn Battuta, and Shaujunan. Daoyi Zigalu. Located north of Cori Code, close to a bay. The geographical location is ideal for the wintering of ships during the annual monsoon rains. Presence of Chetty, Arab and Jewish merchants among others. <laughs> Caste and line of succession According to K. V. Krishna Iyer, the court historian in Kori Code, the members of the royal house of Samuthiri belonged the Samantan Nair community. In the royal family, talis of the princesses were usually tied by kshatriyas from Kodungalar chief's family, which the Samuthiri recognized as more ancient and therefore higher rank. The majority of the women's Sambandam partners were Nambudiri Brahmins. The family of chieftains that ruled the polities in pre modern Kerala was known as the Swarupam. The rulers of Kori Code belonged to Nedirapu Swarupam, and followed matrilini system of inheritance. The eldest male member of Nedirapu Swarupam became the Samuthiri of Kori Code. There was a set pattern of succession, indicated by stanams in the royal line. Five stanams were defined in Kori Code. These positions were based on the chronological seniority of the incumbent in the different thavajas of the Swarupam and constituted what is called in the records as Kuruvajcha. Unlike in the case of Cochin Kochi, there was no rotation of position among the Thavajas. Thus no particular Thavazi enjoyed any privilege or precedence in the matter of succession, as the only criterion for succession was seniority of age. Five stanams existed in Kori Code, each with its own separate property enjoyed in succession by the senior members of the three Kovilakams of the family. First stanam, the Samuthiri of Kori Code. Second stanam, Aranadu Alamkar Nambiathiri Tirumalpadu the Aralpadu. Second in line successor to the throne. Aralpadu's seat was in Karampuza in the northeastern region of the present-day Palakkad district. This area of Malabar was annexed from Valuvanadu in the leadership of the then Aralpadu. Third stanam, Aranadu Munamkar Nambiathiri Tirumalpad the Munalpadu. Fourth stanam, Edataranadu Nambiathiri Tirumulpadu the Edataralpadu mentioned in the Manjari Pulapada inscription as the overlord of the 300 Nairs. The Edataralpadu used to reside in a palace at Edatara near Manjari. Fifth stanam, Nedirapu Muda Aradi Tirumulpadu the Nidaralpadu. Nidural Padu was the former head of the house Aranadu chief under the Cheras of Kodungalar. The three Thavajas were Kijake Kovilakam Eastern Branch Padanher Kovilakam Western Branch Puthia Kovilakam New Branch the senior female member of the whole Samuthiri family the Valiya Thambarati also enjoyed a stanam with separate property known as the Ambadi Kovilakam women were not allowed to be the ruler of Kori Code and the oldest male member traced the female becomes the next Samuthiri Topic History Brahmanic legends such as the Karalalpathi compiled in its final form c. 17th-18th century and the Calicut Granthavari recount the events leading to establishment of the state of Kori Code. There were two brothers belonging to the Aradi ruling family at Nedirapu. The brothers Manachan and Vikraman were the most trusted warriors in the militia of the Kodungalar Cheras. They distinguished themselves in the battles against the foreigners. However, during the partition of Shara Kingdom, the Shara monarch failed to allocate any land to Nedirapu. Filled with guilt, the king later gave an unwanted piece of marshy tract of land called Kori Code to the younger brother Vikraman the elder brother died in the battle. The king also gifted his personal sword and his favorite prayer conch, both broken, to him and told him to occupy as much as land as he could with all his might. So the Aratus conquered neighboring kingdoms and created a large state for themselves. 
As a token of their respect to the Shara king, they adopted the logo of two crossed swords, with a broken conch in the middle and a lighted lamp above it. Durat Barbosa, in the early 16th century, mentions the Cheriman sword among the three swords and other royal emblems of the Samuthiri usually taken out in ceremonial processions. The sword was worshipped by the Samuthiris in their private temple every day and especially at the time of the coronation. The Cheriman sword was burnt in a surprise attack by the Dutch at Kodungalar while the Samuthiri was residing with Valutha Nambayar. A new sword was made in 1672 out of the fragments of the old. The broken parts of the 1672 sword, kept in a fully sealed copper sheath, are still worshipped daily in the Bhagavathi temple attached to the palace of the Samuthiris at Tiruvashira. Rulers of Aranadu Historical records regarding the origin of the Samuthiri of Kori Code are obscure. However, it is generally agreed among historians the Aratus were originally the autonomous rulers of Aralnadu, Aranadu region of the Kodungalar Shara Kingdom. The Kodungalar Shara Kingdom was a congeries of chiefdoms, which were ruled by local chiefs. The office of the chief, senior prince of Aranadu Aralanadu Utaya is assumed to be the hereditary. The earliest reference to the chief and chiefdom of Aranadu is the Cochin Jewish copper plate c. 1000 AD. Old Malayalam inscriptions name two titles for the rulers of Aranadu, Manvapala Manavayata c. 11th century and Manavikrama c. 12th century. In the later period, Manavikrama, Manaveda, and Viraraya were the only names given to male members in the royal family, the Samuthiri always being known as Manavikrama. Historians assume that Manaveda might be a corruption of the old Malayalam title, Manavayata. Scholars tentatively identify Manavayata and Manavikrama with the titles of the elder and younger brothers of the famous origin legend. The strength of the hundred organization of the senior prince of Aranadu was 600. Hundred organizations with same capacity are also found in Ramavalanadu, Valuvanadu, Kishmalanadu, and Vanadu. Scholars comes across only one Nadu with a stronger force, namely Kurumpuranadu, with a force of 700 although many lesser ones with 500 of Purakishanadu, 300 of Nantujanadu, etc., are available. The following table shows available inscriptions mentioning the rulers of Aranadu. Although there is no solid basis for the famous partition legend the Cheriman Perumal tradition surrounding the end of Kodungalar Cheras, it is a possibility that following the mysterious disappearance of the ruler, the land was partitioned, and that the governors of different Nadus asserted independence, proclaiming it as their gift from the last overlord. There is some ambiguity regarding the exact course of events that led to the establishment of Arata's rule over Kori Kod, their later seat. Some historians are of the view that the Arati was in fact a favorite of the last Kodungalar Shara king as he was at the forefront of the battles with the Chola Pandya forces in South Kerala. The Arati seems to have led the Shara army to victory. The king therefore granted him, as a mark of favor, a small tract of land on the sea coast in addition to his hereditary possessions Aralanadu province. The Aratis subsequently moved their seat to the coastal, marshy lands and established the city of Kori Kod, to corroborate his assertion that Arati prince was a member of the inner circle of the last Shara king Rama Kalasakara c. 1089-1122, scholars cites an old Malayalam inscription AD 1102 found on a granite pillar set up in the courtyard of the Ramashwaram temple, Kolam. According to the inscription, the king, residing at Panankavu Palace at Karakini Kolam, sitting in council with Arya Brahmins, the four Brahmin ministers, the leader of the Thousand Nairs, the leader of the Six Hundred Nairs of Vanadu, Puntharakan Manavikrama, the chief of Aranadu, and other feudatories, made prayaschidam for some offence against the Arya Brahmins by donating paddy for daily feeding the Brahmins and leasing out a charikal for that purpose to Vanadu chief Kumaran Udaya Varma. Topic. Expansions to central Kerala Keralalpathy describes the events following the gift of Kori Kod to the Arati prince. Kori Kod and its suburbs formed part of Polanadu ruled by Polarthiri. The Arati marched with his nares towards Panayankara and besieged the Polarthiri at his base, resulting in a 48-year-long standoff. The Arati was unsuccessful, and then he propitiated the Bhagavati, bribed the followers of Polarthiri and even the consort of the ruler of Polanadu and won them to his side. 
Learning of this treachery Polar theory fled from Kori Code. The Arati emerged victorious and shifted his seat from Nedirapu to Kori Code, then also called Thrivikramapuram. The Aratus built a fort at a place called Velapuram port to safeguard their new interests. The power balance in Kerala changed as Aral Nadu rulers developed the port at Kori Code. The Samuthiri became one of the most powerful chiefs in Kerala. In some of his military campaigns, such as that into Valuvanadu, the ruler received unambiguous assistance from the Muslim Middle Eastern sailors. It seems that the Muslim judge of Avkori Code offered all help in money and material to the Samuthiri to strike at Thirunavaya, smaller chiefdoms south of Kori Code, Baipur, Chalium, Parapanadu, and Tanur soon had to submit and became their feudatories one by one. The rulers of Payormala, Kurumbranadu, and other Nair chiefs on the suburbs of Kori Code also acknowledged the supremacy of Kori Code. There were battles between Kori Code and Kurumbranadu for a coastal region called Payanadu. Payanadu was a part of Kurumbranadu in early times, and was eventually given as a royal gift to Kori Code. Kori Code easily overran the Kurumbranadu warriors in the battle, and Kurumbranadu had to sue for peace by surrendering Velissari. The ruler of Kori Code next turned his attention to the valley of Purur. Large parts of the valley was then ruled by Valavakonathiri, the ancient hereditary chief of Valuvanadu. The principal objective of Kori Code was the capture the sacred settlement of Thirunavaya. Soon the Samudiris found themselves intervened in the so-called Kermatsaram between Nambudiris of Panayurkar and Chovarakar. In the most recent event, the Nambudiris from Tirumanasari Nadu had assaulted and burned the nearby rival village. The rulers of Valuvanadu and Purumpadapu came to help the Chovaram and raided Panir simultaneously. Tirumanasari Nadu was overran by its neighbors on south and east. The Tirumanasari Nambudiri appealed to the ruler of Kori Code for help, and promised to cede the port of Panani to Kori Code as the price for his protection. Kori Code, looking for such an opportunity, gladly accepted the offer, assisted by the warriors of their subordinate chiefs Chalium, Baipur, Tanur and Kodungalar and the Muslim naval fleet under the Koya of Kori Code, the Samuthiri's fighters advanced by both land and sea. The main force under the command of Samuthiri himself attacked, encamping at Thripangodu, an allied force of Valuvanadu and Purumpadapu from the north. Meanwhile, another force under the Eralpadu commanded a fleet across the sea and landed at Panani and later moved to Tirumanasari, with intention to descend on Thirunavaya from the south with help of the warriors of the Tirumanasari Brahmins. Eralpadu also prevented the warriors of Purumpadapu joining Valuvanadu forces. The Muslim merchants and commanders at Panani supported the Kori Code force with food, transport and provisions. The warriors of the Eralpadu moved north and crossed the river Purur and took up position on the northern side of the river. The Koya marched at the head of a large column, and stormed Thirunavaya. In spite of the fact that the warriors of Valuvanadu did not get the timely help of Purumpadapu, they fought vigorously and the battle dragged on. In the meantime, the Kori Code minister Mangatachan was also successful in turning Kadanamana Elevakale Velodi junior branch of Kadanamana to their side. Finally, two Valuvanadu princes were killed in the battles, the Nairs abandoned the settlement and Kori Code infested Thirunavaya. The capture of Thirunavaya was not the end of Kori Code's expansion into Valuvanadu. The Samuthiri continued surges over on Valuvanadu. Malapuram, Nalambur, Vallapanatukara and Manjuri were easily occupied. He encountered stiff resistance in some places and the fights went on in a protracted and sporadic fashion for a long time. Further assaults in the east against Valuvanadu were neither prolonged nor difficult for Kori Code. The battles along the western borders of Valuvanadu were bitter, for they were marked by treachery and crime. Panthalar and Ten Kalams came under Kori Code only after a protracted struggle. The assassination of a minister of Kori Code by the chief minister of Valuvanadu while visiting Venkatakota in Valuvanadu sparked the battle, which dragged on for almost a decade. At last the Valuvanadu minister was captured by Samuthiri's warriors and executed at Pataparambu, and his province ten Kalams, including Katakal and Panthalar were occupied by the Samuthiri. The Kijake Kovilakam Munalapadu, who took a leading part in this campaign, received half of the newly captured province from Samuthiri as a gift. The loss of this fiercely loyal chief minister was the greatest blow to Valuvanadu after the loss of Tiranavaya and Panani. Expansions to Kochi 
Kori Code faced defeat in their next assault on Purumpadapu Swarupam. The combined forces of Purumpadapu and Valuvanadu resisted Kori Code warriors and a vicious battle ensued for three days, at the end of which Kori Code forces was on the retreat. After a period of uneasy calm in Kerala, Kori Code occupied Nedunganadu, a small polity between Valuvanadu and Palakkad. Nedunganadu was overran without striking even a single blow. The chief of Nedunganadu surrendered to the Kori Code forces at a place called Kodakuni. Then the Kori Code warriors captured a number of smaller villages around Thirunavaya, such as Tiruvagapuram, from Valuvanadu. The Valuvanadu governor tried to overcome the Kori Code prince's advance at Kolakadu. Near Karampuza in Valuvanadu, the untouchables, the Chirumas and Panans of Kota, resisted the advancing Kori Code forces. The Kori Code won their affection by gifts and presents. Kori Code prince was met by an ancestor of Kavalapara Nair, a vassal of Valuvanadu, at Karakadu. The chiefs under Palakkad surrendered to Kori Code at Vengatri, Nelai, and Kakathodu. Samuthiri of Kori Code appointed the Eralpadu as the ruler of southern Malabar region during this time. The provincial seat was at Karampuza. Talapili present-day Talak of the same name and coastal regions from Panani to Chetwai and Changajnadu submitted to Kori Code without any resistance. Kori Code then completed the subjugation Panani Talak from Valuvanadu and captured Vanarinadu from Purumpadapu. The Purumpadapu ruler was forced to shift their base further south to Thiruvanchakulam. When Thrikanamathilakam near Thiruvanchakulam came under the Kori Code control and Purumpadapu ruler again shifted their base further south to Kochi Cochin. in 1405 AD, Kori Code subjugated large parts of the state of Kochi in the subsequent years. The family feud between the elder and younger branches of the ruling family of Kochi was exploited by the Samuthiri of Kori Code. The intervention was initiated as Kori Code's help was sought against the ruling younger branch. The rulers of Kodungalar, Idapali, Eror, Sarkara, Patanjadadam and Chittor supported or joined Kori Code forces in this occupation of Kochi. Some of these were the vassals of Kochi. The Kochi chief was defeated in a battle at Thrissur and his palace was occupied but, the defeated chief escaped to further south. Pursuing the chief to south, the Kori Code forces under Samuthiri penetrated and occupied the town of Kochi. Unable to withstand the attacks, Kochi finally accepted Kori Code's rule. The prince from the elder branch was installed on the throne of Kochi as vassal. The battles against Kochi were followed by a battle against Palakkad and the expansion to Nadavadam by a Kori Code prince. Kalingo to Venganadu Nambitis was also put under the sway of Kori Code during the time. The severe and frequent battles with Valuvanadu by Kori Code continued. But even after the loss of his superior ally Kochi, Valuvanadu did not submit to Kori Code. The ruler of Kori Code followed a custom of settling Muslim families and the families of other Hindu generals who had allegiance to him, in the captured areas of Valuvanadu. Kori Code occupied Valuvanadu now shrunk to Atapati Valley, parts of Manarkad, Atapalam and Paranthalmana but could not make much progress into its hinterland. Kori Code was also successful in bringing the polity of Kolathanadu under their control. During his expansions, the Samuthiri occupied Pantalayanini Kolam as a preliminary advance to Kolathanadu. Kolathiri immediately sent ambassadors to submit to whatever terms Kori Code might dictate. Kolathanadu transferred the regions already occupied to Kori Code and certain Hindu temple rites. The stories about the origin of the Kadathanadu ruling family Vedakara are associated with Battle of the Aratus with Polanadu. When the Samuthiri swarmed over Polanadu, he exiled a Polarthiri royal princess and she was welcomed in Kolathanadu Kananur, one of the Samuthiri's rival's polities. After the marriage of a Kolathu prince with this princess the Kadathanadu ruling family was born. The name Kadathanadu refers to as the passing way between Kolathanadu and Kori Code. Some land and Hindu temple rites were transferred to Kori Code during a visit to Kolam by a ruler of the Kori Code. <laughs> Vijayanagara conquests Deva Raya II (1424–1446 AD), king of the Vijayanagara Empire, conquered the whole of present-day Kerala state in the 15th century. He defeated (1443) rulers of Anadu, Kolam, Keelan, as well as Kori Code. 
For now Nunes says that the Samuthiri and even the kings of Burma ruling at Pegu and Tenasserim paid tribute to the king of Vijayanagara Empire. Later Kori Kode and Vanadu seems to have rebelled against their Vijayanagara overlords, but Deva Raya II quelled the rebellion. As the Vijayanagara power diminished over the next fifty years, Samuthiri of Kori Kode again rose to prominence in Kerala. Samuthiri built a fort at Panani in 1498, an embassy from the Samuthiri of Kori Kode, in which the chief envoy was a Persian-speaking Muslim, came to the Timurid court of Mirza Sharuk at Herat in the 15th century. Some Herat officials had, some years earlier, on their return journey from the Sultanate of Bengal, been stranded at Port Kori Kode, and on this occasion had been received by the Samuthiri of Kori Kode. Impressed by the description of the Timurid influence, the Samuthiri decided to send his own embassy to Herat. Abdur Razak, an employee of Sharuk, was soon engaged on a mission to Kori Kode November 1442 to April 1443. He carried a series of presents from Herat, including a horse, a police, headgear and ceremonial robes. As for duties at Kori Kode, at 1 40th, and that too, only on sales, they are even lower than at Hormuz in the Persian Gulf, says Abdur Razak. While in Kori Kode, Razak was invited by the Vijayanagara ruler Deva Raya II to his court. The envoy arrived from the Vijayanagara king had asked the Samuthiri to send the Herat envoy on to his court. He also says the king of Vijayanagara does not possess jurisdiction over the kingdom of Kori Kode, but the Samuthiri was apparently still in great awe of the Vijayanagar king. <laughs> Relations with Yuan and Ming China It is known that the Tang Chinese ships frequently visited the then major Kerala ports such as Kolam for spices in the 9th-10th centuries. According historians, the Nanparaj mentioned in the Ling Dida can be identified with Kori Kode. From the 13th century, Kori Kode developed into the major trading center where the Middle Eastern and Chinese sailors met to exchange their products. Marco Polo who visited Kori Kode in 1293, 1294 records that the trade in Kerala was dominated by the Chinese. Ibn Battuta refers to the brisk Chinese trade at Kori Kode. Wang Ta Yuan, during the Yuan period, describes the pepper trade in Kori Kode in his work, Dao I Qi. Zheng He Cheng Ho, the renowned Ming Chinese admiral, visited Kori Kode several times in the early 15th century. Zheng most probably died at Kori Kode in 1433 AD during his seventh voyage to the west. A major objective of the first Ming expedition 1405 was the kingdom of Kori Kode. Historians presume that the fleet stayed from December 1406 to April 1407 at Kori Kode. Ambassadors from Kori Kode, among envoys from other states, accompanied the returning first expedition fleet bringing articles of tribute to Nanking in 1407. On the second expedition, in 1408-09, Zheng He again visited Kori Kode, stopping as well in Chochen, Kochi. The envoys in the second expedition 1408-1409 carried out the formal investiture of the Samuthiri of Kori Kode, Mana Pichialaman. A memorial inscription was erected in Kori Kode to commemorate the investiture. The Chinese titles and gifts brocades and gauzes were given to the Samuthiri and his retinue by the Chinese envoys. Presumably a stay of about four months was made at Kori Kode, possibly from December 1408 to April 1409. The third expedition 1409 the first one to sail to beyond India, also visited Kori Kode. The fleet sailed on from Kori Kode to Sri Lanka in 1411. The 4th 1413 to 1415, 5th 1417 to 1419, 6th 1421 to 22, and 7th 1431 to 33 fleets also visited Kori Kode. A number of tribute delegations in 1421, 1423, and 1433 among others were dispatched by the Kori Kode rulers to Nanking and Peking. Presents from Kori Kode included horses and black pepper. Brocades of several types were presented to the sum of the Kori Kode envoys. Ma Huan visited Kori Kode several times, and describes the trade in the region. Fei Xin also notices the brisk trade at Kori Kode. The few remnants of the Chinese trade can be seen in and around the present city of Kori Kode. This include a Silk Street, Chinese fort, China Kota, Chinese settlement, China Churi, 
in Kapad, and Chinese mosque Chinapali", in Panthalayanini Kolam. <laughs> Relations with the Portuguese The landing of Vasco da Gama in Coricode in 1498 has often been considered as the beginning of a new phase in Asian history during which the control of the Indian Ocean spice trade passed into the hands of the Europeans from Middle Eastern Muslims. The strong colony of foreign merchants settled in Coricode was hostile, but Samuthiri welcomed the Portuguese and allowed them to take spices on board. In Portugal, the goods brought by da Gama from India were computed at 60 times the cost of the entire Asia expedition. The Portuguese initially entered into hostile conflicts with the Samuthiri of Coricode and the Middle Eastern merchants in Coricode. Within the next few decades, the Estado da India also found themselves fighting with several leading Mapilla trading families of Kerala especially the Kanar Mapillas, led by Mamali and the Marikars of the Pearl Fishery Coast. Kingdom of Kori Code, whose shipping was increasingly looted by the Portuguese, evolved into a centre of resistance. The Portuguese maintained patrolling squadrons off the Kerala ports and continued their raids on departing native fleets. Mapilla and Marikar traders actively worked in the kingdoms of Malabar Coast and Ceylon to oppose the Portuguese. Naval battles broke out across Konkan, Malabar Coast, southern Tamil Nadu, and western Sri Lanka. Marikars transformed as the admirals of Cori Code and organized an effective collection of vessels to fight the Portuguese, Francisco de Almeida and Afonso de Albuquerque who followed da Gama to India, were instrumental in establishing the Imperio colonial Portuguese in Asia. By the mid-16th century, the Portuguese managed to curtail the vital trade between Cori Code and the Middle East. In the end of the century, Kochi was the dominant seaport in Kerala, having surpassed both Kanner and Kori Code. The Portuguese set about breaking the monopoly which Venetians and the Egyptians had so long enjoyed in the trade with Asia. The Egyptians and the Ottoman Turks realized the danger, but internal complications between them gave the Portuguese an opportunity. Panani Muhammad Kunjali Marikar was eventually executed by the combined effects of the Kingdom of Kori Code and the Portuguese state in 1600. Relations with the Dutch and English In 1602, the Samuthiri sent messages to Aceh, where the Veronig de Ziush company had a factory, promising the Dutch a fort at Cori Code if they would come and trade there. Two factors, Hans de Wolf and Leifer, were sent on an Asian ship from Aceh, but the two were captured by the chief of Tanur, and handed over to the Portuguese. These men were later hanged in Goa. A Dutch fleet under Admiral Stephen van der Hagen arrived in Cori Code in November 1604. It marked the beginning of the Dutch presence in Kerala and they concluded a treaty with Cori Code on of November 1604. By this time the kingdom and the port of Cori Code was much reduced in importance. The treaty provided for a mutual alliance between the two to expel the Portuguese from Malabar. In return the Dutch East India Company was given facilities for trade at Cori Code and Panani, including spacious storehouses. In 1610, Cornelis Jacobs van Breekvelt and Hans Bullardum arrived at Cori Code and re-promulgated the old treaty. In 1617, Peter van den Broek was asked by a Samuthiri prince to aid them in a battle against Kochi. The Dutch refused to help the Cori Code rulers. The Dutch, some fifteen years after the Samuthiri first asked for help, had promised much and delivered almost nothing. The Samuthiri finally turned to the English. In September 1610, the English factors at Mocha were approached by the head of the Mapillas there to their shipping in the region from the Portuguese fleets. The English reached Cori Code under Captain William Keeling and concluded a Treaty of Trade 1616 under which, among others, the English were to assist Cori Code in expelling the Portuguese from Fort Kochi and Fort Kronganor. The English set up a factory at Cori Code, and a factor, George Woolman, is sent there with a stock of presents. But the Samuthiri soon found the English as unreliable as the Dutch where military aid was concerned. The factory was wound up in March, 1617. Later in 1661, Cori Code joined a coalition led by the Dutch to defeat the Portuguese in Kochi and conducted a number of successful campaigns. As a result of the Q letters, the Dutch settlements on the Malabar coast were surrendered to the British in 1795 in order to prevent them being overrun by the French. 
Dutch Malabar remained with the British after the conclusion of the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1814, which traded the colony with Banka Island. Topic: <laughs> Mysore occupation and settlement negotiations. It was in 1732, at the invitation of the chief of Palakkad, that Mysore forces marched to Kerala for the first time. They appeared again in 1735, and in 1737 they raided the Samuthiri's frontier outposts. In 1745, the Mysore forces fought three battles with the Kori Code warriors. In 1756 they invaded Kori Code for the fifth time. The chief of Palakkad had placed himself under the protection of the king of Mysore, agreeing to pay an annual tribute of 12,000 phanams. The Fawadar of Dindigul, Hyder Ali, sent Mukdam Sahib, with 2,000 cavalry, 5,000 infantry, and five guns to Kerala. The Samuthiri tried to buy off the enemy by promising treaty, 1756, to refrain from molesting Palakkad and pay 12 lakh rupees for the expenses of the expedition. However the Samuthiri was unable to pay anything to Hyder Ali. In 1766, 12,000 Mysore forces under Hyder Ali marched to Malabar from Mangalore. Mysore's intentions were made easy by the help they received from the Muslims in Malabar. Ali Raja of Kanner, a Muslim ruler in northern Kerala, also helped the invading forces. The Mysore army conquered northern Kerala up to Kochi with relative ease. Hyder Ali inflicted a major setback on the Kori Code warriors at Perinkolam Ferry on the Kota River. As Mysore edged closer to the outer reaches of the city of Kori Code, the Samuthiri sent most of his relatives to safe haven in Panani, and from there to Travancore, and to avoid the humiliation of surrender committed self-immolation by setting fire to his palace at Manankira the 27th of April. Hyder Ali absorbed Malabar district to his state, but as soon as the Haider Ali marched to Coimbatore, Nair rebellions broke out in Malabar. Some members of the Samuthiri family rebelled against the Muslim occupiers. This included the Aralpadu Krishna Varma with his nephew Ravi Varma. The princes were aided by the British East India Company. In 1768 the Samuthiri prince was restored in Kori Code, agreeing to pay an annual tribute to Mysore. For nearly six years till 1774 nothing was heard about Hyder Ali. In 1774, Mysore forces under Srinivasa Rao occupied the city of Kori Code. The prince retired to Travancore in a native vessel. The baton of resistance now passed to his nephew Ravi Varma. Ravi Varma helped the company occupy Code in 1782. By the Treaty of Mangalore, concluded in 1784, Malabar was restored to Mysore. In 1785 the oppression of revenue officers led to a rebellion by the Mapillas of Manjuri. As a reward for aiding to put down the rebels, and partly as an incentive, Tipu Sultan settled upon Ravi Varma a pension and a jagir in 1786. The peace was soon broken and Tipu sent 6,000 troops under Mon. Lally to Kerala, Lord Cornwallis invited the Kerala chiefs to join him in 1790, promising to render them in future entirely independent of Mysore and to retain them upon reasonable terms under the protection of the company. Prince Ravi Varma met General Meadows at Trichinopoly and settled with him the terms of the Kori Code's cooperation. After the Third Mysore War 1790-1792, Malabar was placed under the control of the company by the Treaty of Seringapatam. In the settlement negotiations with the Joint Commission in 1792, the Samuthiri proved recalcitrant. To pressure him, a portion of his former territories Payanadu, Payormala, Kijakumpuram, Vidakampuram and Palavai was leased to the ruler of Kurumburanadu as manager for the East India Company. Finally, after prolonged negotiations, the hereditary territory of the Samuthiri, together with the coin mint and the sea customs, was leased back to him. He was also temporarily given jurisdiction over the petty rulers and, as a mark of the Samuthiri's exceptional position in Malabar, the revenue fixed for Baipur, Parapanadu and Vetatanadu was to be paid through him. As previously noted, these tax payment and jurisdictional arrangements were terminated later and the Samuthiri of Kori Code became a mere pensioned landlord receiving the Malikana. On 1 July 1800, Malabar was transferred to the Madras Presidency. On 15 November 1806 the agreement upon which rested the future political relations between the Samuthiri of Kori Code and the English was executed. Topic. Governance 
According to historian M. G. Raghava Verrier, at the peak of their reign, the Samuthiris ruled over a region from Kolam to Panthalayanini Kolam Koyilandi. The hereditary local chiefs, more or less independent in their region, acknowledged the overlordship of the Samuthiri in Kori Code. The local magnates, conferred with privileges and titles by the Samuthiri, were more dependent on Kori Code. In times of battles the chiefs and magnates provided the warriors to the Samuthiri and were protected in turn when an enemy made encroachment to their dominions. Some of the local chiefs had the investiture ceremony, rather similar to that of the Samuthiri of Kori Code, some claimed Kshatriya status, and some of them even used the title, Raja. Vedam Udaya Mutha Koval, Tirumanashari Nambuthiri, Thalapali Punathor Nambadi, Thalapali Kakatu Nambadi, Vanilashari Padinjer Nambadi, Parapur Karapuva Koval, Chitor Nambuthirapadu, Manakulathal Mupal, Parapur Valaval Koval, Parapur Kayavil Koval, Venganadu Nambadi, Kurumburanadu Madampu Unithiri were some of the local chiefs of the kingdom of Kori Kod. K. V. Krishna Iyer, the court historian in Kori Kod, explains, Apart from the southern half of Kurumburanadu, Payanadu, Polanadu, Panani, Cherinadu, Venkadakota, Malapuram, Kapil, Manarakadu, Karampuza, Nedunganadu, Madavatam, Kalangod, Kodavire, and Mankara, the kingdom of Kori Kod included the following territories as tributary polities Katiyam, Payormala, Palavayi, Tanur, Chalium, Bipur, Parapanadu, Thirunavaya, Thalapali Kakad, Thalapali Punathor, Chitor, Chavakad, Kavalapara, Edapali, Patanj. Jadadam, Kranganur, Kalangodu, Cochin and all of its vassal polities, Paravar, Purakad, Vadakumkar, Tekumkar, Kayamkulam and Keelan. The kingdom only included the following territories during the late 18th century. Payanadu, Polanadu, Panani, Charanadu, Venkatakota, Malapuram, Kapil, Manarkad, Karampuza, and Nedunganadu. The Samuthiri claimed to be, with more or less influence, the paramount sovereign over Payormala, Palavayi, Bipur, Parapanadu, Tanur, Talapali, Chivakadu and Kavalapara. Kori Code had also taken possession of the more full and immediate sovereignty over Kalangod Venganadu, Kodavire and Mankara. The Samuthiri was assisted in the work of government in Kori Code by four hereditary chief ministers called Sarvadi Karyakar, a number of ministers called Karyakar and Poltis. The Karyakar were appointed and removed by the Samuthiri. Adhikaris, Thalashenavars, Achanmar and temple functionaries also belonged to the Poltis. There were ritual specialists like Hindu priests of the palaces, astrologers etc. as well as various occupational groups like physicians, weavers, and militiamen all of whom were attached to the royal establishment. Sarvadi Karyakar Mangatachan, the Prime Minister Tinayancheri Alayatu Dharmatu Panikar, the instructor in arms who commanded the Kori Code forces Virakal Paranambi, Treasury and Accounts Ramachan Nejingadi Shabandar Koya Although the Samuthiri of Kori Code derived greater part of his revenue from taxing the Indian Ocean spice trade, but he still did not run a fully developed mercantilist state. The Samuthiris left trade in the hands of Paradesi Middle Eastern and Kerala Muslims, Shabandar Koya sometimes Kwaja, popularly known as the Koya of Kori Code, was a privileged administrative position in Kori Code. The Shabandar was the second most important official in most Asian polities after the ruler. Trade at the port of Kori Code was controlled by this Muslim merchant cum port commissioner. He supervised customs on the behalf of the king, fixed the prices of the commodities, and collected the share to the treasury. As the farmer of customs he also had right collect brokerage and poll tax at the port. According to tradition, it was a merchant from Muscat, Oman who induced to the Samuthiri to the conquer Valuvanadu. The Koya was subsequently appointed as the Shabandar by the Samuthiri of Kori Code. He is also given all the privileges and dignities of a Nair chief, jurisdiction over all the Muslims residing in the bazaar of Kori Code, the right to receive a present from the Ilavar, the Tayar, the Kamalar, the Smiths, Carpenters, Stone Workers, etc., and the Mukyuvar whenever the Samuthiri conferred any honors on them on ceremonial occasions. Revenue and trade 
The major sources of revenue for the Kingdom of Kori Code were The Samuthiri of Kori Code derived greater part of his revenues by taxing spice trade. Trade, both coastal and overseas, was dominated the Muslims, though Jews, Chetis from Karamandal coast, and Vanyas from Gujarat all traded in and from Kori Code. The Muslim traders included natives Mapillas and Marikars as well as Muslims from the Middle East. The foreigners dominated the lucrative Indian Ocean spice trade. The goods carried across the Arabian Sea included spices, pepper, ginger and cardamom, and trans-shipped textiles, and coconut products. The import into Kori Code consisted of gold and copper, silver, horses canner especially, silk, various aromatics, and other minor items. The Indian coastal trade network encompassed commodities such as coconuts, core, pepper, cardamom, cinnamon and rice. Rice was a major import item into the Kingdom of Kori Code from Kanara and Karamandal coast. Low value but high volume trade in foodstuffs that passed through the Gulf of Manar was also handled by the native Muslims from Malabar coast. The local people were suppliers and consumers of goods in Korikdi ports. The coins minted in Kori Code included Panam made of gold, Taram made of silver, and Kasu made of copper. The officer in charge of the mint was called the Goldsmith of Manavikraman. The royal mint was destroyed in 1766. 16 Kasu equals 1 Taram. 16 Tarams equals 1 Panama Hans table 1409. 1 Kochi Panam equals 15 Taram table 1503. Gold coins Kori Code, Kanar, Kochi Panam 15 carats gold 19 Panams equals 1 Cruzado Portuguese or Ducat European. Kolam Panam 19 carats gold 12 Panams equals 1 Cruzado Portuguese or Ducat European. Silver coins All Malabar Coast Taram. 16 Tarams equals 1 Panam Copper coins Kolam Kasu 15 Kasus equals 1 Panam coins in circulation in the pre Portuguese kingdom of Kori Code included gold coins called Pagoda, Pratapa, silver tangas of Gujarat, of Bijapur, of Vijayanagara, and the Larinis of Persia, Zarafans of Cairo, the Venetian, and the Genoan ducats. Other coins in circulation in the kingdom of Kori Code, in some time or other, included rial, irail, derma, drama, rupee. Arupaka, Rasi, Rachi, and Vanadu Chakram. Vanadu coins, it seems, came to circulation after the Mysorean interlude. Rasi later gave way to the Kaliyuga Ryan Panam. Of Kaliyuga Ryan Panam, there were two varieties. One of these issued by Kanner was afterwards imitated by the Samuthiri called Virarayan Putia Panam, to distinguish it from the coin of Kanner, which then became Pazhaya Panam. The four Pazhaya Panams made a rupee while three and half Pudia Panams equaled a rupee. Military Kori Code's attitude towards the vanquished chiefs and European governors was generally marked by moderation. The whole conquered area was not ruled directly from Kori Code but was ruled by a Kori Code official, general, minister, or Arati prince. Sometimes, its former rulers allowed to rule as a vassal or feudatory. Kori Code forces consisted mainly of feudal levies, brought by the vassal rulers and chiefs. The former were divided into five classes commanders of the 5,000, of the 1,000, of the 500, of the 300, and of the 100. Standing armies were kept at strategic locations like Kori Code, Panani, Chavakad, Chunganadu, etc. Dharmatu Panikar, the instructor in arms, commanded the warriors. The nominal cavalry was commanded by the Kutharavadatu Nair. Nair militia was slow moving as compared to the cavalry, and always fought on foot. The use of firearms and balls had been known before the advent of the Portuguese. As gunpowder and shot made by the natives were poor quality, Kori Code later employed the Europeans to manufacture them. The Mapillas formed the main corps of musketeers, led by Thinayancheri Eliathu. Topic. Kunjali Marikars The Kunjali Marikars effectively functioned the naval commanders of the Kori Code Samuthiri in the 16th century. The Mapilla seamen were famous for their naval guerrilla warfare and hand-to-hand -hand fighting on board. 
The Mapilla vessels, small, lightly armed, and highly mobile, were a major threat to the Portuguese shipping all along the Indian west coast. But the Mapilla artillery was inferior, and the vessels were incapable of large-scale joint, organized operations. Merchants drew Mapilla corsairs and used them to transport the spices past Portuguese blockades. Historians speculate that the Maricars were primarily suppliers of food materials from the ports of the Coromandel coast and spices from interior Kerala and Sri Lanka. Some assume that the Maricars, before the beginning of the hostilities with the Portuguese, were traders of rice from Konkan. One Ismail Maricar seems to be a prominent rice trader in Kochi. During the early years of Portuguese presence in Kerala the native Muslim merchants of Kochi, such as Sharina, Karim Makar Karim Marikar, Mamali Muhammad Marikar, Midas Marikarm, Nino Marikar, Ali Apule, Koj Mapilla and Abraham Mapilla etc. acted as spice suppliers for them. The Marikars also supplied food materials for the Portuguese settlements in Kerala. Mamali Marikar of Cochin was the richest man in the country. These traders, along with the other big Mapilla, and Syrian Christian merchants, also acted as brokers and intermediaries in the purchase of spices and in the sale of the goods brought from Europe. It was the commercial interests of the Portuguese private traders in Cochin that came into the conflict with Mapillas and the Tamil Marikair traders. By 1520s, open confrontations between the Portuguese and the Mapillas, in southern India and in western Sri Lanka, became a common occurrence. After a series of naval battles, the once powerful Chinna Cutty Ali was forced to sue for peace with the Portuguese in 1540. The peace was soon broken, with the assassination of the Muslim judge of Kandar Abu Bakr Ali 1545, and the Portuguese again came down hard on the Mapillas. By the end of the 16th century, the Portuguese were finally able to deal with the Mapilla Challenge. Kunjali Marikar IV was defeated and killed, with the help of the Samuthiri, in c. 1600 AD. Even after the execution of Marikar IV, the title of the Kunjali Marikar continued to exist for almost century. The four key Kunjali Marikars were Kuti Ahmed Ali Marikar I Kuti Poker Ali Marikar II Patu Kunjali Marikar Marikar III Panani Muhammad Kunjali Marikar IV Topic List of Kori Code Samudiris Historical documents rarely mentions the individual names of the Samudiris of Kori Code. Mana Vikrama, Mana Veda, and Vira Raya were the only names given to male members in the royal family, the Samudiri always being known as Manavikrama. Mana Veda might be a corruption of the old Malayalam title, Mana Viata. Portuguese historian Diogo de Cauto was the first to attempt the construction of chronological scheme. The following is a list of rulers of Cori Code from the Zamorans of Calicut, 1938, by K. V. Krishna Iyer. The first column no gives the number of the Samuthiri reckoned from the founder of the ruling family, based upon de Cauto's assumption that there had been 98 Samuthiris before the Samuthiri reigning in 1610. Topic. First dynasty The original seat of the aristocratic clan was Nedirapu and the head of the house was known as Nedirapu Mutta Arati, a title enjoyed by the fifth in rank from the Samudiri. Under the Kodungalar Shara rulers the Mutta Arati governed Ernad with the title of Ernad Utiar. Later the clan abandoned its ancestral house and transferred its residence to the present-day Kori Code. Note, italic names only indicate the asterism under which the Samuthiri is born. Topic. Second dynasty It seems that the original ruling family came to an end with the 114th Samuthiri of Kori Code. The 115th Samuthiri, the first of the second ruling family, was the oldest of the princes adopted from Naleshwaram in 1706. Topic Samuthiri family Today the Samuthiris of Kori Code returned to Kori Code from Travancore by 1800. The company reduced the Samuthiris to the position of pensioned landlord by giving them an annual payment called Mali Khanna. Payments Mali Khanna were taken over by the Government of India after independence in 1947. The royal family has been trying to get a pension from the various governments over 50 years. 
The Kerala government decided to award a monthly pension to members of the royal family in 2013. At present, the Samuthiri of Kori Code is trustee to 46 Hindu temples under Malabar Devaswam Board, as Madras HR and CE Act 1956 in northern Kerala, including five special grade temples, which generate a substantial revenue. The Samuthiri also has a permanent seat on the Guruvayur Sri Krishna Temple's Managing Committee. Zamorans High School, situated overlooking the Talai Temple, was established in 1877 and the family manages the Zamorans Guruvayurappan College. The family has sought the government's help to preserve the artifacts in their private collection. This collection include palm leaf manuscripts, swords, shields and other valuables. Malabar Devaswam Board Commissioner recently proposed to the Kerala state government that the temples under the hereditary private trustees, such as the Samuthiri, should be attached to the board. See also Kingdom of Cochin Travancore <coughs>